We've been asked quite a few times recently about making panel doors on a CNC machine. I'm Simon and here's my outline video on how to do this along with an introduction to our new cutter aimed at producing realistic foiled or painted doors with crisp corners on a 3-axis CNC machine. We're going to do this by making the cutter run up into the corner and back down again. Right, let's get straight into this. I've already set up my work area. Uh, this is the fence that I use. I always use a fence. Um, it's just my preference. And I've drawn a little crib here of the tooling to show the relationship between the two. The important thing is that the when we cut the tool path from this panel razor, it doesn't want to go over the edge of the V carved tool path we cut with this 90 degree cutter. We can see that the depth that I'm working to is 13 millimetres. VCarve won't make that because of the shape of the cutter. You'll see more about that later. And the difference between the edge of here and the centre line of that tool path is 28 millimetres. The cutter itself is 26 millimetres diameter. So if I draw that on there. 26 millimetres. So that is my little crib sheet. Right. So the first thing we need to do is draw the perimeter of the door. So in this case, I'm going to make the door 400 millimeters wide and 600 millimeters tall. Because I work off a fence, I need to move that away from the fence so that when I cut it, I don't cut into the fence. So I'm gonna move it by 15 millimeters in both directions. Okay, so that's the perimeter size of our door. So now I want to add the rails and styles. Now, I'm not teaching you how to use Vectric. There's loads of ways to do this, but for today, I'm gonna to copy and paste that, and I'm gonna set the object size, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make them 60 mil. So I'm gonna take off minus 160 equals, and minus 160 equals. I'm going to apply that. That's the size of my door centered. We also need, because that 90 degree cutter is 26 millimetres wide, we need another square and we need to take off 52 millimetres uh, to make that fit within there. So minus 52 equals minus 52 equals. So what we're going to do now is we want to do a V carve in between that, that line and that line. So we need both of those alive. We're going to, we're going to this, this button here, the V-carve engraving, engraving, V engraving tool. We're going to set our flat depth at 13 millimeters. We've got my V bit, 26 millimeter diameter in there already. And we're just gonna go ahead and calculate that. Uh, let's reset the preview. Um, and preview the tool path that we've just done. And you can see what the cutter does. It creates this sharp corner. Now, if we look on there, you can see the way that it does it is that it goes along and it brings the point of the cutter up the, to, up the workpiece until it gets to the point. And that's how you get a pointed cutter. Right, so the next thing we want to do is create the panel rays. And we're going to do that with a different tool, but I'm going to name this so I can keep an eye on everything that's going on here. So I'm using a 90 bit, so I'm going to start with 90. I always do that 90 cutter, and that is, uh, that's our, that's our uh, rail and style effectively profile. Okay. Um, now the next thing we want to do is we want to use our panel razor and put our panel rays on. Now I know from my crib sheet, from the edge of the panel rays, from the edge of the rail or the style to the center of the panel razor is 28 millimeters. So I can copy this, this uh, rectangle um, and I can make one of those if I set the object size I can say uh, it's 28 times 2, 56. So if I say minus 56 equals minus 56 equals, apply that. And that is that that is going to be the line that I want the 120 mil panel razor to run round. So let's do it. Um, 
we're going to do a profile for this because we only want to run it run in one direction we want to be 13 millimeters deep we want to use that 120 degree cutter um, uh, we want to be on the line not inside or out um, we want to well, add some ramps I oh, like a ramp um, it's always worth ramping in it's much kinder to your cutter so we're going to calculate that and let's preview all the selected tool paths to see what we've got so now you can see there's the rail and style profile that we did earlier and then this is our raised panel detail and we can see if we look in there we've got a lump in the middle and that lump is the bit that we need to take out next so back to here so that's the center of that cutter um, and I know that the, the center part of the cutter is eight millimeters um, across there so I need to I need to duplicate that line and go and make it eight millimeters bigger so uh, again I've copied it set the object size we want to go plus this time plus eight equals plus plus eight equals and apply that so in between that line and the center line of where the cutter is we've got an area that's not flat and that is that shape in there now I actually would like a little quirk in here because you would normally see a quirk there that um, where the where the raised panel fits into the rail and the style so I'm going to choose where that quirk is now I, I can I can do this fairly randomly by saying well I want that quirk to be something like that size so from the outside of the cutter to there in terms of size is somewhere about somewhere about 10 or 11 millimeters so let's let's call it 10 I think that'll give me a nice size quirk so if I if I copy that is the outside line there so if I copy that again uh, set that object size we want to take 20 millimeters off that so it's 10 and 10 so uh, minus 20 equals minus 20 equals so we know now that in between this line and this line we want a flat section 13 millimeters deep so let's cut that we want to go down 13 uh, we're going to cut that with an eight millimeter plywood cutter it's inexpensive cutter that it's really good on ply but it's fantastic on mdf as well and it's an inexpensive cutter so i often use it on mdf um, and it's, it's accurate as well gives a good bottom finish um, I'm going to ramp the plunge, plunge moves because I like to do that uh, that's it calculate and preview all tool paths and you can see now that that has got rid of the bottom and it's left us just in this place that little quirk detail mm, the software shows a line there but I'm sure it's not there because I know that the depth of cut there is 13 and the depth of cut I've just done is 13 now actually if you look at this uh, part of the tool path here well, we ought to check because we're cutting we're we don't need to start um, we're cutting this lump off from this surface so we could probably start if I draw a line we'll see that from there to there is about eight millimeters so we could start that cut if I go back into this cut and edit it we could start that cut at, at say seven millimeters I want to go to 13 uh, so we could do a cut depth of six millimeters so it won't it won't run round and cut to start with um, because there's nothing there for it to cut uh, so let's calculate that um, reset preview preview the tool path so you start to see the shape that we're getting made up now in order to make it more realistic I think we should add some some join details if it was a joinery made panel door it would have a join in here somewhere so let's add those in uh, so that's just going to be a basic line we want to go past the edge of the work 
which is uh, 80 millimeters. So I'm just going to set that at 90 so that we don't stop right on the edge. Um, so I want to make those 90 and that one wants to be 90 as well. Two at the bottom. Right now, if I just cut those, because what you have to remember is that line is directly on that point. And if I just cut those, the V end of the cutter will be slightly it'll be outside the square line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move those. So I'm gonna move them across by a millimeter because I'm gonna cut into a depth of a millimeter. So approximately that works out a millimeter. Very, very close enough for doing this. Um, so we're gonna go across one with those. And with these, we wanna go across minus one. So let's get in there and cut those. So that is going to be just a normal profile for, for those four. Better make sure they're all on. Uh, we want a depth of cut, as I said, one millimetres. We want to use our 90 degree cutter. Uh, don't need to wrap the tool pass here, we're only going in a millimetre. And we calculate. Now, if we re preview, reset the preview, preview on the tool paths, you can see what we've got there, and you can see it's lined up nicely on that edge, which is what we're really looking for. Now, really, I should have named these, so I'm going to go get in here and name them. So, um, profile one, that is the, let's name that. Um, it's going to be done with a 120 degree cutter, and it's the panel rays. Uh, this this one is the base bucket and that we're doing that with an eight millimeter so I like to I like to keep a note of what it is it just makes it easier later and then profile two is the so those are the joins so let's rename that joint detail it's just to make it look a bit more realistic right okay you, you'll see why I'll rename them in a minute so the next thing we want to do is put a chamfer around the outside of the door so again I'm going to start with the outside of the door I'm going to copy and paste that um, we want to set the size if we go for eight millimeters bigger so 408 60 eight center it apply um, we can write a tool path for that as well which is just going to go all the way around the outside uh, we've gone out four millimeters so if we go for a depth of five that should give us a fairly nice chamfer we want to be on on that line i've just drawn um, let's add some ramps let's go ahead and calculate that Review the top path. You can see the chamfer around the edge there, nice. So that is um, done with a 90 cutter, 90, and that is the chamfer around. Uh, so then the last thing we need to do is cut out the door. So again, I'm going to do that with the 8mm plywood cutter. I'm going to cut all the way around the outside to a depth of 18.4. Measured that off my board earlier. I'm going to use that eight millimeter plywood cutter. Uh, eight millimeter ply, okay. Uh, and I want to go round the outside. I am going to add some tabs because I don't want it to move around. So um, I am going to add some tabs. I'm going to put one there and one there. Um, I'm also going to add some ramps because it's kind of on your tool. Let's calculate that. Preview all the tool paths and that, sh that should be nice.